All right, here is the twenty one airplanes. a lot more to aerobatics than just flying upside down. That's why members of the Susquehanna Valley Aerobatic Club were outstanding in a field near in what will become the center of an imaginary 3,300 square foot box as seen from the air this weekend. This aerobatic box has a top of 3,500 feet, but pilots will be flying as low as 300 feet. During a competition, the pilot enters the box and flies an aerobatic sequence of, say, 20 to 25 maneuvers. If he or she flies outside that box, they will be assessed penalty points. However, consider the split-second timing, precise speed and altitude control, constant calculations for wind and temperature, not to mention the G-forces, and you have a very demanding sport, both physically and mentally. It's just a matter of trying to figure out in this dimension where you and the airplane are at the same time. And it's... it's uh, it's interesting at times. An understatement. Bob, the founder of Chapter 58, which is the only international aerobatic club in Pennsylvania, is a radiological engineer by trade. Dick Schaus is a computer consultant. And Barbara Murphy is a flight attendant for Eastern Airlines. All practice here at the newly named Donegal Springs Air Park, formerly the Elizabethtown Marietta Airport. They're excited about this weekend as they prepare to give their best against the finest aerobatic pilots in the East. Give that an 8 five. Minerva Eno is in air charter sales, but for relaxation she judges regional aerobatic events. She and 18 other judges in groups of three will be located on all corners of that aerobatic box. Everything, every maneuver, everything that they're doing while they're in the air is marked and judged. And we're critical. That's the only way we get good pilots that can go further into the nationals. Well-known aviation artist Kristen Hill, a fledgling judge herself, will be capturing moments of this weekend on canvas. And with pilots like Barbara Murphy and Dick Schaus in the air, the Pennsylvania Aerobatic Championship should be a high-flying affair. I couldn't believe it. My arch nemesis, the famous Red Baron, sent me a fax and a challenge to meet him once again in the skies over Maytown at the 11th Annual Pennsylvania Aerobatic Championships. Bando, you are really a lousy pilot. That last encounter back in the early 80s was an embarrassing one. Red got away. Well, I threw caution to the winds and visited Donegal Springs Air Park once again to watch some of the early arrivals practice for the championships, which are sponsored by the Susquehanna Valley Aerobatics Club. These are some of the country's best pilots, like Dave Messersmith, who flew in from Pittsburgh in his 230 horsepower pits. Dave, a pilot for U.S. Air, also operates an aerobatic school. When piloting for the airline, he flies as smooth as possible, but during competition, it's quite the opposite. Dave says the stress level is much higher, too. When I get up there to fly aerobatics, uh, there's so many things going on, and I'm working so hard to do it exactly perfect because there's five people on the ground trying to judge me for it. For these practice maneuvers, Dave was pulling seven Gs. Is this fun? Oh, it's great. Larry Bayshore and Dick Schaus are co-chairman of the championships. They expect nearly 50 pilots will be competing in several categories, ranging from known aerobatic sequences to freestyle. Although the moves are kind of dangerous looking, safety is rule number one. All pilots must have a certificate of aerobatic competency. Take a look at fuel lines. The aircraft are also inspected by our safety director and we go over the aircraft with the pilot and uh, to ensure that the airplane is airworthy and safe. The public is invited to watch the Pennsylvania Aerobatic Championships both Saturday and Sunday at Donegal Springs Air Park, and there is no admission charge. But keep looking skyward because... Bendel, I'm back! Come and get me! <laughs> oh, nuts! Here we go again! <laughs> Where's my plane? such a weenie. <laughs> On the move, near Maytown, Wendell Woodbury. <laughs>
I've been interested in flying since I was very young. It was always intrigued me. My father took me for an airplane. And then I got my license when I was 19. And I got interested in aerobatics when I built my first pits. I was always interested in flying. As a teenager, I built a lot of models, and uh, we had a an old Stinson mail plane used to come over to farm every afternoon at 4.30. And I said, someday I gotta do that. Excellent, looks good, good energy management. I, I think there is nothing, nothing replaces aerobatics for making a person a safe pilot. Uh, he learns very quickly that this airplane does not care whether it's right side up, upside down, pointed straight up in the air. The airplane is going to fly the same way and do exactly what you tell it to do. So we went up and he did my first spin and I said, I lived! Ha! Do it again! One of the first people I met in the area was Larry Bayshore. He said, hey, you ought to join Chapter 58. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I did, and I had a, a World War II T-6, which was aerobatic, and we used to tear up the skies with that. Now I have a Cub, which is not aerobatic, but it still occasionally goes upside down and things like that, you know. Well, we're renowned for trying to maintain our grassroots aviation, although we have a couple of people in our chapter that are now representing the United States and the world, which is really something. They've gone up through the ranks, and yet they started as just little pilots who couldn't really keep in this aerobatic box, imaginary box that we have. So in all in all, we have a great bunch of people and a lot of talent in all areas in order to run this. But I still think it was born in my kitchen and in my dining room, and the meetings, and of course, the many parties, because since it was at home, we found a lot of reasons for this, you see.